became colder. Look, uh, this is a very important point that my colleagues have, have actually aired um, at, at some length, at some length in the House. And um, it's quite true to say that I was somewhat saddened by the decision the committee made, because as has been alluded to by my honourable colleague, Mr Mike Saban, I wanted this legislation to come into effect as soon as possible. And I make, I make no apologies for that. This is a bill. We know that this commencement date, as we've heard, this clause provides for all provisions in the bill to come into force on the day after the Act receives the Royal Assent. That's what we that's what we that's what we thought. That's what we thought. But after that's what I wanted to happen, but after we had considered it as a committee, when does it come into force, Mr Ockenbaugh? Twenty eight days. Twenty eight days. Twenty eight days after the Royal Assent. So I asked this question of the committee members. I said, what possible reason is there for delaying the implementation of such an important bill? And we have heard some of the, we have heard some of the arguments. And in fact, the arguments, and I have to pay credit to uh, Carol Beaumont, who was part of the committee and, and contributed to this debate. In fact, we, we had a, a committee of um, members from all sides of the House, and it was a collegial committee, and the upshot of the received combined wisdom was that for a number of reasons, 28 days after royal assent um, was preferable to the instant, um, the instant implementation that, that, that I was hoping for. So the committee recommended that clause two be amended to provide that additional time after the Act receives royal assent before the provisions of the bill come into force. And, and we have heard that this is to give people time to understand about the, 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 the law having changed. But I would submit to you, right. you know, and that is right, but I mean, I've got a lingering little bit of schadenfreude here because, you know, I just think... You know, as you raise your point yourself, very valid, very valid point. What if an act occurs after that 28, you know, but in that interim, in that inter interim period between it receiving royal assent and it coming to law? How the people, we hope that people will realise as, as word gets out about the passage of this bill, and, and we have had a very, uh, you know, the commencement date being what it is, we have had some um, publicity from the Airline Pilots Association recently calling for a bill just like this in the light of a recent incident just a few weeks ago that occurred. Um, so so that, that 28 days is what we are left with. Um, and I just hope that that 28 days will not be a time where people take advantage of the fact that it hasn't come into law, that they pick up their high-powered laser pointer put it in, in, in their pocket and, and march off out into a public space because there is actually no reason for that. And that the commitments, commencement days, 28 um, days after royal assent, um, is actually going to be a four-week period where that could occur. Now, I've just done my sum. So it's an interesting situation. I'm going to give my valedictory speech uh, is it, it's timetable for the 23rd of July at the four o'clock. So it's, 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 you, can, you, can, you can secure your seat now, Mr Twyford. I look forward to seeing you there. Um, but the interesting thing is that this bill is likely to go for its third reading, its third reading after I've given my valedictory speech. So I might be in the position of not being able to deliver a third reading speech on my own bill. But such is the way the Parliament works. And really, it's a small price to pay for the chance to get this bill through the House whilst I am still a member of this House. It is a huge privilege 
to stand here. I must say it is a great privilege to stand here and to be able to speak in the House without getting dark looks from the whip saying, stop speaking. No, oh, Mr Chair, Mr yeah, Chair, Mr Dr. Chair. Cam because Porter. it's very rare that that, that actually happens. I mean, how many of us sitting here tonight can say that they've had that privilege? Well, no, you're a very fine whip, it has to be said. It has to be said, you are a very fine whip, and you're doing remarkably well as a man who has just come back from attending a high-level Westminster seminar in the United Kingdom, representing our Parliament in the best possible way that you have done. So, um, the commencement bill, 28 days after all said. So, if I give if I give my speech on the 23rd of July, then it's likely to receive royal assent on the 25th of July, because normally the the, the bills go to the Governor General to be signed, and it's possible he might be in town and he could he could give royal assent on the 25th of July. So 28 days from the 28 days from the that period, have we got any people in the House who are good at mental arithmetic? It's all right, I've done the sums. It's actually August the 22nd. August the 22nd. So I wonder, I pose this question. I pose this question. Do you think that it's likely that this, thing, this date, 28 days after the Royal Assent, which we are suggesting a putative August the 22nd, could that be when you actually Google what happened on the 22nd of August sometime in the future, could that come up as that was the day the summary offences, possession of high-powered laser pointers amendment bill passed? Could that be? Because it's very interesting to see what actually did happen on August the 22nd, historically. So August the 22nd, remember, is the putative commencement date for this bill. August the 22nd is the putative possible commencement date when the, the uh, Governor-General, Lieutenant-General Sir Jerry Mataparai signs the bill and it gains effectively royal assent. So I'm posing the question to the House that in years to come, could it be that when you Google the 22nd of August, it comes up that that was the date that in the New Zealand Parliament, the summary offences um, possession of high power laser pointers amendment bill passed. Because what else has happened on that date? What happened on... Well, look, it, ah, well, I didn't... That wasn't on Google. That wasn't on Google. But the commencement date of August the 22nd, the commencement date of August the 22nd, has actually had a number of rather, well, a mixture of the sad, a mixture of the joyful, a mixture of the memorable, a mixture of the less memorable. But let me just, let me just outline some of the things that have happened on August the 26th, which we know is actually the likely date that this bill will be the commencement date of this bill. You know? So... A point of order, Calvo. Mr Chair, Mr Chair, I... Um your attention to uh, speakers order, sorry, standing orders 108 around relevancy and uh, also note in uh, 1082 uh, tedious repetition being referred to and wonder if this, this meets that clause, sir. Uh, speaking, speaking to the point of order, uh, Mr Chair, previous speakers have drawn attention to the fact that the commencement date of this bill is very significant because of the significant implications particularly for those who will be charged with enforcing it and therefore for members opposite who frequently delight in filibustering on matters to criticise the member in charge of the bill for going to some detail for discussing the significance right, of the enough. date. I don't need any more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Um, well, well, in Two points the member made. One was uh, he should be sp speaking about commencement date, and, and certainly he's doing that. Around repetition, I think he's probably getting into the furry edges of actually doing that. <laughs> Kim called it. Mr Chairman, I, I can't imagine I've ever been in the furry edges in this house before. It, 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 has to be, it has to be a first. But I'm going to move swiftly along there because... There is nothing furry about these edges, which I'm about to delineate for you. And that is, now this, uh, this, this, we are talking about August the 27th. All these points are relevant. All these points are relevant because August the 22nd, August the 22nd is the likely putative commencement date of this bill. And I asked to the House what else happened. Sadly, 
first thing that came to mind is, and I, I'm not, this is not something I'm treating with anything other than the utmost um, seriousness, that there was a suicide bombing in Western Iraq, and that was in 20, that was in 2013, August 2013. And when you think about what is happening now, that is an extraordinarily sad indictment of the world situation. Something that is actually a little bit, something I was unaware of, I have to say. In 2012, on August the 22nd, which is the putative commencement date of this bill, Russia and Vanuatu became members of the World Trade Organization. Now, could it be, could it be that in, in a few months' time, maybe longer, after this bill is passed, that in 2014, on August the 22nd, that this bill being passed into law in New Zealand, because this is a worldwide problem, it's not peculiar only to New Zealand, that this bill, the commencement date being, we think, possibly August 22nd, could be of such significance that it would also be coming up in a Google search. If someone wanted to look at significant dates, and we've heard that Tim McIndoe's brother-in-law, or brother, it's his birthday, but that's not... Uh, Ruth Dyson. I move that the question be now put. I, I'll hear Chris Ockenwald. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And uh, it's a